Okay. Hello, everybody. Kind of talking D with Wilson. And not for much longer here on KRWF 95.9. Talking about cannabis has kind of got tiring for me. I think I've done my uh, share of talking about it. So I believe next Thursday we'll start talking about what in the world. That's what this show will be called. What in the world with Wilson. And I'm going to curate a week's worth of crazy news. I'm almost thinking like uh, I'll take personal crazy stories as well. I haven't ironed out the logistics on that. But until then, today, it's Can of Talk Indy with Wilson. I'm Wilson. Welcome to the show. It's a beautiful day out if you're in the upper Midwest. I don't know if you are, but if you are, you're enjoying a beautiful day here. Can of Talk Indy with Wilson again on Care Double F. 420, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news, so stick with me again uh, next week, I probably won't. I mean, we'll we'll discuss, you know, local cannabis news as we get closer to the election process. Uh, you're going to be able to vote on cannabis measure five on November five. So make sure you get out and vote and hopefully it'll get voted in. And, you know, me no longer trumpeting cannabis legalization. It'll be, you know, it'll be good because it'll be done. But anyway, again, talking about cannabis has gotten tiring for me. So, and having ADHD, I just can't do it anymore. So, next week, we're going to start a new horizon of topics. So, again, it'll be called What in the World with Wilson, and we're going to cover crazy stories, or just ones that make you go, what in the world is that? All right, but until then, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook, 1,200 megs of locally grown hemp whipped up into a tub of fun outer body butter for your body. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit, and I show him props every Sunday, Antioch Church, 417 Main Avenue, 10 a.m. We do a recovery class If you've got a monkey on your back or you've kicked the monkey off your back, but you can feel that little banana eater pull it on your pant leg, come on through. We know somebody upstairs that can take care of you. 11 a.m. worship. Again, kind of talking to you with Wilson. I'm your boy, Wilson. Thank you for joining me. And next Thursday, I'll be in here with a new show, Subject Matter Topic. Again, it'll be called What in the World with Wilson. We'll have tunes interspersed. And then I'm just going to cover crazy stories that makes you go, what in the world was that? So, it's a new it's a new page that's going to be happening here. But again, I, uh, I feel like it's time to talk about something else. All right. So, let's get through all this stuff. 20th anniversary donation. 20 years. 20 years of left of the dial and more music. Radio Free Fargo 95.9 FM Care Double FLP celebrating its 20th anniversary. That's exciting. Please consider making a special donation during this time. Radio Free Fargo is nonprofit and depends on your support. Just go to www.radiofreefargo.org. Scroll down to the donate button. As always, thank you. Please tell others about us. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Listen live 24-7 at www.radiofreefargo.org. Now, vote for us in forum. Best of the Red River Valley 2024. It's that time of year again. Vote for your radio station, your favorite local radio show and business. Please vote for Radio Free Fargo 95.9 FM, Double FLP as your favorite radio station. Please choose one of your specialty programs for best local radio show. You can find these by clicking on shows on our, w- on our website, www.radiofreefargo.org. Please be supportive of businesses present and past who have do support Radio Free Fargo, such as Fix It Forward Ministries. And Orange Records. You can find voting easily on Facebook by looking up Best of the Red River Valley. We appreciate your support and your listening. Please tell others about Radio Free Fargo. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. All right, people. Ladies and gents, worms and squirms. Let's do a little music. We'll come back and we'll talk about something that it says that you're like, what in the world? Here's Calvin, John Spencer, Blues Explosion, 95.9. Is Blues Power. Okay, Calvin, the John Spencer Blues Explosion here on Double F 95.9 LPFM, Moorhead Fargo, RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming everywhere on this blue and green marble. We can get into your ear hole. Now stick around after me for Stinky Arts 
Music Mart. And don't forget the Fargo Record Fair. Programming on KRWF 95.9 LPFM is being underwritten by the 14th Annual Fargo Record Fair. With over, four, with over 50 tables of vinyl, CDs, posters, music memorabilia, and much more. The Fargo Record Fair will take place on Saturday, October 26th from 11 a.m. to 5 at the Fargo Brewing Company, located at 610 North University Drive in Fargo. Search Fargo Record Fair on Facebook for further details. All right. So I got something for you here, folks. All right. And this is the kind of stuff that I will uh, be talking about when this show turns over into more of a uh, crazy news story hour. Uh, this is from UPI, toad found in bag salad, bought from grocery store. And it's cool because I got a picture for you. You can always Google it and see it yourself. This is a big frog. Reptile Rescue Group in England is caring for a toad. Apparently it needed care, found in a bag of salad that was returned to a supermarket. Berkshire Reptile Rescue said on social media that the toad was discovered in a bag of salad and returned to the grocery store. All right. So rescuer Graham, bless its heart. Thank you, Graham. Saving one toad at a time from salad bags. Collected the reptile and is keeping it isolated for the time being and is not yet clear whether it came from overseas. <laughs> Which is crazy, it's still alive, right? So he's in a nice little box. He's got some little dirt there. He's got some leaves to hide in. He's got a little bowl. He's chucked in some beetles for his dinner and he's loving life. So the toad is chilling. Uh, they uh, apologize to the customer in a statement. While our growers minimize pesticide use to promote sustainable farming and reduce harm to wildlife, there's a stringent sorting and washing process. This is a very rare occurrence because, yeah, it's like, how can you miss, how can you miss a toad? You know, I mean, I get bugs and stuff and maybe like those little worms, but I don't know. So a Baltimore area teacher is accused of using AI to make his boss appear racist. Which is kind of <laughs> kind of like, um, what? You can do that? And so, a Maryland high school athletic director is facing criminal charges after police said he used AI to duplicate the voice of the principal, leading the community to believe Eiswert said racist and anti-Semitic things about teachers and students. And now you think about it, like back in the day, it was always about, you know, like the kid could just say, hey, I, you know, don't punish me. I'm going to tell the cops you hit me, you know, or hit themselves, you know, bruise themselves. And, yeah, you know, and then, you you know, it's like, well, what are you going to do? You, you want to believe the children. Right. And it's like and you should. But it's always like, you know, or just just defamation of character. You can say something and you're like, well, so and so doesn't normally lie. So if he says so and so stealing cookies from the break room. I feel like he's stealing cookies. But now AI, now you got to argue your way out of that. You know, well, it sounds just like you. It looks just like you. It's got to be you. How do you, you know what I mean? So anyway, we now have conclusive evidence that the recording was not authentic. It's been determined the recording was generated through the use of artificial intelligent technology. Dazon Darian was arrested Thursday on charges of stalking, theft, disruption of school operations, and retaliation against a witness after a months-long investigation from the Baltimore police. So uh, attempts to contact him uh, were not successful. Uh, again, the wild headline making details of this case aside, it emphasizes the serious potential for criminal misuse of artificial intelligence. That's what I'm saying, that experts have been warning about for some time. And you're already seeing, like, YouTube shorts, you know, they're watermarked as AI, you know, and you can kind of tell that they're AI. But that's just the early stages. I mean, at some point, you know, we're talking, we could we have swore it was you, Wilson. It looked like you, it talked like you, you know, had your account numbers. We gave them your, all, all the money. We gave them the 47 cents in your account. Sorry, you're broke. So. I guess for just a few dollars, anyone can harness artificial intelligence to make audio and visual deep fakes. So this Baltimore area case is not a canary in a coal mine. And I'm never really sure what in the world that even means. I, I don't know what that means. I mean, canary in the coal mine, I don't get it. I think the canary has been dead for quite a while, and I don't get that either. So 
It's a Baltimore school principal. That's what's poignant. You know, it's not about T-Swizzle. It's not about Joe Biden or Elon. It's just some guy trying to get through his day. It shows you the vulnerability. And so his scheme began in January, an attempt to retaliate against whatever. So the two men were at odds with each other over his work performance. So apparently there was a potential mishandling of some money, but the person never did the job. So, I don't know. He just got mad. Uh, So, let's see. The audio clip had profound repercussions. It not only led to uh, removal from the school, but he got a wave of hateful messages. He probably had signs out in his yard. Uh, The school was inundated with threatening messages. I mean, it was a big deal, right? And Darian was taken into custody after attempting to board a flight to Houston. So... He's released on 5,000 bonds, so he's out there. And so after following the story, uh, they're left with the question, what is going to be the consequence of this? And that's what I'm saying. I mean, if AI can be you, bruh, we're going to have to have a task force for what? Like finding out whether or not it was AI or you. That's pretty crazy. All right. Well, I got a little songy song for you. This is brand new from the new Master Sounds. 420, we're going to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Right after me is Stinky Arts Music Mart. But right now, let's do Down on the Farm, the new Master Sounds, 95.9. And welcome back. Down on the Farm, that's brand new from the new Master Sounds here on 95.9. KRWF. RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming everywhere on this blue and green marble. It's almost time to open a big fat bag of cannabis news. It is 420 about. So, that's exciting, right? So, again, let me tell you, next Thursday, I'm going to be switching it up. I mean, we'll still be following the Measure 5 in the state of North Dakota, but I'll be switching up the subject matter. It'll My show will now be called What in the World with Wilson. I'm going to be covering crazy stories like we just covered in the last segment. Of course, cannabis legalization is important to me. So, you know, if there's news like that, it'll fall into the uh, to the show. But I believe it's came to an end. And I'm just quite frankly, I'm, I've been doing it for so many years. I'm kind of bored and I can't do something I'm bored with. I got to keep it fresh. So it's been a long run and it is time to do that thing we do. So on the other side of this. We'll talk. Hey, it's Phil from Canaheads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Okay. And hello, everybody. Howdy. Howdy. It is another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Thank you for tuning in to me. Canna Talk and D with Wilson. That's what's happening. We're opening a big fat bag of cannabis. It's 420. What do we got for you now? Again, new economic, new economic frontier is the group behind the measure number five that can be voted on in November. Actually, November 5th, to be exact. The vote to legalize cannabis. The details can be found at their website, New Economic Frontier. You're going to be able to have plants, and you'll be able to possess. Uh, Again, it's a conservative amount, but legalization is legalization. I think it was ran by a pretty tight ship, and so I think uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the results in November. But again, educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can calmly, nicely, and politely discuss that with your peers. Okay, so again, New Economic Frontier has got a measure for you to vote on November 5th. Measure 5. Keep it alive. Vote yes on Measure 5. I wonder, they probably need me to come up with jingles. I can do it. I can do it. I'm here, bruh. Let's do it. But anyway... This is probably going to, uh, you know, have some implications in North Dakota once this, you know, once it's voted in. 
Cannabis Moment, Minnesota judge dismissed lawsuit claiming people who grow cannabis at home can sell it under state constitution's peddler provision. Now, I think that's just a great name for a provision. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. So, again, here's what's happening. The Minnesota judge has ruled that while the cannabis plant might be mature, the constitutional challenge they filed to allow them to sell is not yet ripe. I feel like we're doing some English flowery words but anyway the problem is is it hasn't actually so here's the thing the lawsuits brought by three cannabis patients one non-medical they're legally growing up to eight plants at home and they basically want to sell the excess cannabis and again even in north dakota with four plants two flowering you know you're gonna you're gonna have extra you just are so article 13 section 7 says any person may sell or peddle the products of the farm or garden occupied and cultivated by him without obtaining a license thereof. But the state attorney argued that the case is premature, which it is, because it's just OCM is in the midst of the rulemaking. Like, we, we ain't there yet. So is such a rule possible? A list of draft rules uh, posted by blah, blah, blah doesn't go there, likely because the state law legalizing rec cannabis clearly states that sales must be licensed. And the regulators are currently going through a complex process toward what will be a limited. Bop, 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 bop. Still, it is possible, though unlikely, that the final rules could allow home growers to sell a cannabis they don't need for personal use. Uh, again, uh, they uh, might allow unlicensed sales by those who grow their own cannabis on their farm or garden. And there's no way, no how, that the regulation board is going to let these guys grow at home and sell without a license. However, some point the court's going to have to address it because of this peddling provision peddler's provision so that's where we're going to be so the decision doesn't go anywhere near the basic constitutional question whether a constitutional amendment that emerged from a farmer selling excess melons on the street without a license must now apply to a newly legalized farm product because this court concludes it lacks lacks subject matter jurisdiction because it's just not there yet and that makes sense. And I guarantee you that if they're if legislators can find lo- loopholes to push things ahead, they going to. And they definitely did. They definitely did. Now, this is from KFYR TV, a North Dakota station. Okay, voters debate the pros and cons of passing Measure Five, legalizing cannabis in North Dakota. Measure 5 on the ballot proposes legalizing rec cannabis in North Dakota. Those in favor of the measure saying legalizing cannabis could help the state's economy. However, there are others who worry that will negatively impact the state. And I just wish, you know, those guys, you know, just you just wouldn't let them spout. You know, everybody, everybody be fact checking everybody. Right. Except for these guys. These guys can always say all this stuff without any any proof. You know, like they just make blanket statements. This won't be good for us. It's going to negatively impact us. How? Why? 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 You know, it's just because you said it. I'm supposed to believe that it's backed by stuff. And uh, new economic chair said legalizing cannabis about staying ahead of the inevitable. It's been on the ballot multiple times already. He said it's going to pass at some point and postponing a fight that's already scheduled. It just doesn't work. And you end up wind up cleaning more messes than you could have eliminated by getting ahead of something. And that's that's solid. That's a solid quote. He said it's better for the state to lay its own ground rules. Again, I get it. I mean, we could potentially lose millions of dollars in revenue to other states. Now that's that's a selling point, but I feel like that's only a selling point to people that are cool with cannabis, just in general. It's the whole kids and driving and and uh, it's going to turn our neighborhoods into fentanyl type neighborhoods, right? That's the problem. The problem is kind of that ignorant, this is going to be horrible for, you know, children and, and you know, the safety and health. You know, that's that's a problem, you know, because it almost turns on you when you start going, well, let's vote it in because we're losing tax dollars. And they're like, well, at the risk of our children and you lose. You don't win that article when you do that or you don't you don't win that argument when you do that, you know, so. So, again, he, he he said something right here. The drug dealer is actually the gateway. It's not the drug. And he's right. 
I mean, even in my addiction, I'd go for cannabis because I knew it helped me sleep and not do any more speed and go to bed. And I'd get there and there just wouldn't be any. And sometimes it would almost be implied that there was just to get me into the house and then bait and switch me. No, we got powder. Sorry, you know, you can leave, you don't come back later. Well, of course, I'm not going to leave, you know. Let's get that marching, let's get them marching ants up my nose hole. Stat. So, you know, it, you know, it is what it is. So if we have the ability to take that out of their ability to raise revenue because they operate them as a business, and that's a win for law enforcement. And I would, I would think so. Now, this Sheriff Kelly, he says legalizing cannabis could have negative repercussions. Well, it could have positive repercussions, too, you know. He said legalizing it won't free up law enforcement because they aren't spending a lot of resources on cannabis enforcement anyway. Well, isn't that interesting, right? That quote's interesting. You guys aren't? Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Because if it isn't a big deal, then it shouldn't be a big deal. Right? It just doesn't make sense. You tell me, well, legalizing it could have negative repercussions. He says legalizing it won't free up law enforcement because law enforcement ain't doing anything about cannabis anyway. Well, if they're not doing anything on cannabis anyway, then just legalize it. If you're not spent, why aren't you spending any resources on it? That's what I want to know. Why aren't you? you? Why would you need to spend resources on cannabis? Because you're not enforcing it? I don't Are you letting people go when you pull them over? Why aren't you? I mean, what do you mean? See, because that's interesting to me, right? You tell me you're not spending any resources on cannabis enforcement anyway. You're not. Well, then... Well, then why not? Why aren't you? Right? Because you just said it's a negative repercussion. I don't get it. The cartels aren't going out of business. Blockbuster Video went out of business because it didn't change, but the cartel will change. He's pretty witty, this Lieben. And they will do whatever they have to do criminally to profit. Yeah, it's fentanyl now. That's what that's what they're doing. And then he, then comes these stinker quotes. Legalizing something small like this can lead to bigger problems down the road. I mean, what an open end, just big fat what is that? Everything we legalize in this society comes at a cost. We legalized gambling years ago. It generated a lot of revenue, but it generates a lot of cost for the state. Now we've got people addicted to gambling. We've got gambling crime occurring in the state. Now I wonder what kind of gambling crime we're talking about. Like, like you're, you're in the casino, you got the little arm bar, some guy comes and slaps the guy, you know, was he coming over your shoulder, yanking the coins out the tray? Well, what's happening with that? You know, what's, what's happening? So anyway, that's, uh, he said, ultimately it comes down to the kind of future people want for North Dakota. I believe it's medic- medically beneficial. I, I, I just don't think it has any long-term horribleness with it. You know, that certainly is, that certainly comes with tobacco and alcohol. And that's certainly allowed. You know, you can, you can advertise it at sports games. You can buy it at sports games. It's, it's entirely socially acceptable. Nobody's fighting to reduce it. Now this gambling, you know, where's this legislation to stop it then? If it's a big deal and it ain't about the money, well then stop. Let's make gambling illegal. Leaving. You know. Get on that, get on that uh, platform. But whatever, okay. There you have it. So again, vote yes on Measure Five, November fifth, and it's coming up. It's coming up real soon. Uh, so the legalization of cannabis, also known as Measure Five, this is from Valley News Live article, uh, is one of the key topics in the upcoming North Dakota election. So again, here we are just spouting this stuff. Here's his concerns for legalizing it. It's not safe. It, it, it isn't. I mean, they're thinking about rescheduling it. It's being used medically in all kinds of states, safely. People use it medicinally, safely. I mean, the uh, the argument point for using cannabis medicinally, right, is I don't have to do opioids anymore. I I was able to wean off this. I was able to wean off that because cannabis is so much safer, right? Even in the, you know, the withdrawal process relative to that and Xanax, insane. And people are prescribing Xanax, you know, because they say the end kind of, you know, 
the end is uh, the end, blah, 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 the means. I don't remember what that saying is. So anyway, his this Christy Spooner, which is our favorite lady, other concerns are how addictive the drug can be. It could create significant problems for people who overuse it, she fears. Well, I fear that, you know, problems come, sister. <laughs> anyway, cannabis is not safe, says Finken. Today's cannabis is 10 times more powerful than the cannabis of the 60s. See, these are just like, these are just like these weird, empty, fact, facts, you know, factsless, kind of baseless, just statements, you know. Whereas Steve says, we put together an initiative measure and the language is very constrictive, very conservative and gives all the power to the state, which ain't great, right? I mean, you don't love that, but it should, you know, appease everybody above in this article. My greatest concern, she says, and there's like melancholy violins behind me playing really sad music now. My greatest concern is that there's a message out there that cannabis is a harmless substance. And we know clearly that it is a very highly addictive substance. We, we know clearly. And, and that's the thing. It's not clear. It is not clear that it's highly addictive. We, we, we don't know that clearly. You know, so how can you say that? I just, I don't understand how you can say it. All right, we got another crazy story for you. Are you guys ready for this one? I don't know if you guys are ready. Maybe you guys aren't ready. Michigan library closed when bugs crawled out a return DVD case. Suburban Detroit Library was closed Monday morning after a DVD case and a return bin was found to be filled with stowaway bugs. Now, I didn't have time to Google it. Maybe you want to. Now, I, are they just saying it's something that hitched a ride, like a bad bug? Or is there actual stowaway bugs, if that's their deal? That's what them bugs are about. They're out there stowing away in places. I have no idea. I have no idea. The Royal Oak Library said that the library was closed for three days after multiple insects were found inside a case dropped into a book return. The DVD was returned sometime after we closed and before we opened, so nothing prior to that would have been affected. The book drops were immediately locked, and all items that were in those book drops were bagged up and isolated. Ooh, that's... Uh, wait, oh, ah. Uh, Follow-up post said the facility had been given the all-clear by a pest control. The company identified the insects as cockroaches. We should receive... We receive monthly pest inspections of the building, so you should not have any worries about coming to the library. Now, I love that because that's kind of how people like are shysty, right? They call them stowaway bugs. Like you're supposed to be, you mean like, you're like, wait a minute. You mean hitchhiker bugs? You mean like bed bugs, sir? You're going to call them stowaway bugs? That's the new jive slang? You don't want me to freak out? We don't want them to freak out. Let's just call them stowaway bugs. It's like, oh, you mean hitchhiker bugs? Whatever. So this is from Cannabis Moment. South Dakota Police Commission rejects exceptional law enforcement student overpassed convictions. I want to use my story as a way to connect with the community and show them the change is possible. Colorado native and former teenage runaway with a criminal history, wow, who moved to South Dakota with her children. She became a top student in the law enforcement program. She won't be allowed to become a police officer in the state. They voted unanimously to deny her certification. Okay, so this is interesting because I didn't read the article. Commissioners committed her story of self-improvement and encouraged her to look for work in the criminal justice system, but said the details of a 2020 cannabis arrest were too concerning to certify her. Ham's case was one of two contested hearings that took place Wednesday at the George Mickelson Justice Center. Oh, okay, so the second involved... Uh, Mo Bridge police officer, training officer who was fired this year for sending dozens of explicit messages to a female trainee over Instagram. Uh, Bratlin told commissioners he struggled with sleep and post-traumatic stress from a 2006 explosion in Afghanistan. And so he doesn't remember much of his conduct as a result, but he also said there was no excuse for his behavior, did not deny the allegations. So the commission voted to revoke Bratlin's certification. Officer candidate said she was forced to be a prostitute. Ham was convicted of prostitution in 2010. 
During the contested hearing, uh, she ran away from home trying to find love. She was forced to be a prostitute. She was beaten and not allowed to leave. Started slow with these people, taking me into their home, feeding me, good life, bop, 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 bop. She said at the time when she was 18, she was unaware that her driver's license had been suspended. And then she was arrested for felony cannabis possession in South Dakota after a traffic stop by a state trooper. The, uh, the trooper found the remains of a cannabis joint, which is nothing, as eight separate one-ounce baggies. So what are we talking about now? Half pound? Half pound, which that's not great. And a pistol. Oof. And hundreds of dollars in cash, according to Hank. Ham later pled guilty to felony and received a suspended imposition of sentence. Uh, her public-facing criminal record is now clear, but police have accessed information on charges scrubbed from public searches. So apparently they know more than you do. So she said they come from different dispensaries. She also asked about the amount. She goes, I smoke quite a bit. I would think three or four times a day. But we're talking a half pound. I don't know. As with the arrest, uh, she described the situation as a wake-up call, the prostitution arrest. She long uh, hoped to become a police officer, but said it wasn't until her arrest that she realized it was illegal to have a handgun with that much cannabis in South Dakota. She said, were she given the chance to be an officer, her personal experience would help her connect, and it would. And it would. So I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about that? I mean, because that's the thing. The argument is, well, you, you should be able to still be officers, and, and then those cops in Jersey, they sued. Because on their off time, you know, they were able to utilize cannabis because it was legal. But this story is a little nefarious, isn't it? And so I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I hate to say the cops might be right in this one. I don't know. That's a that's a rugged. That's yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you changed your life, and you were exemplary in your training. You know, if you don't get second chance, I mean, where, where's the second chance? Is just in McDonald's jobs? You know, you can't excel. You know, your second chance can include being an officer if you can follow the, you know, expected requirements. Here we got a wild story. Researchers who gave LSD to a dog to treat separation anxiety says it's safe and effective. And I'm not so sure how you know that. Okay, but... Uh, the first study looking at the effects of low dose acid to treat anxiety in a dog caused no adverse effects and significantly attenuate the animal's nervous system. So it involved a 13 year old dog that suffers from separation anxiety. I feel like after 13 years, you should have that figured out, but I don't know. A single dose of one CP LSD was administered after which point the dog was observer observationally assessed over the course of four hours five hours. The researchers from uh, blah, 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 exposed the dog to anxiety-inducing stimuli in intervals throughout the study. While the drug didn't appear to affect her normal behavior, the team said significant change in the animal's behavior was observed over with no signs of mild signs of anxiety. This is the first time that a study of this nature has been conducted, I would imagine. I mean, how are you getting that approved? We want to give dogs acid back. At, you know, what do you guys think? Can we get some grant money? Uh, wait, let's wait a while. <laughs> Oh, man. I got a question for you. Can I talk indeed with Wilson? That's what you're listening to. We about wrapping this show up. Again, I guess for argument's sake, the last can of talk indeed with Wilson as I'm changing up the format. I've kind of tired out the subject. Uh, I believe other people are sick of listening to me talk about cannabis. So vote yes in November. So... All my talking won't be in vain. And then it'll be called What in the World with Wilson. We're going to talk about crazy stories. In fact, I might even have people in here. I might have call-ins for stories. And, why, you know, as long as you're not incriminating yourself and, you know, confessing to crimes. However, that'd be interesting. I just don't, I don't think that's good. I don't think I can. So, again, What in the World with Wilson begins next Thursday or the Thursday after that. I might wrap up some loose ends next thursday but again it's been great i hope i've educated people and that we're further and closer to understanding the cannabis isn't as bad as they thought and it'd be nice to think i had a part in that all right cannabis moment u.s cannabis consumers have spent more than are you ready how okay how much money do you think cannabis consumers have spent on pre-rolls 
in the past year and a half. Are you guys ready? $4.1 billion on pre-rolls in the past year and a half. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a lot. So many. I don't even know how many that is, but uh, that is a lot. I I was trying to see here if there was any other kind of, I don't even know how they know, but uh, that is pretty interesting. I've got one more kind of fun little thingy for you, and then we will uh, get out of here. What do we got here? CBD-rich hemp extract is an effective natural insecticide against mosquitoes. Who knew? Hemp leaf extract repels mosquitoes. So, uh, the effects were seen in both mosquitoes that are susceptible. Mosquitoes are one of the deadliest animals in the world. They've been pumping out that. What's that new one they've been pumping out? The snail scurvy. I don't know. I might have made that up. But again, New Economic Frontier. They are the people behind the measure that you will be voting yes on in November. November 5. Vote yes on Measure 5. And I think I'm going to uh, wrap this thing up. Because that's how we do it. Programming on KRWF, LPFM, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 FM is being underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. Flatland Guitar is your full-service guitar shop and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, and Paul Reed Smith guitars and other brands. They sell guitars on consignment. They take trade-ins and have a full-service on-site repair center. Check out Flatland Guitar and Luthery on Facebook or come by and visit them in person at their location at 1450 25th Street South in Fargo. Again, thanks for tuning in to Can of Talk Indy. With Wilson, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news at 420. That happened. I've got some music now. Here's six of one. Justin Johnson, 95.9. Hold on. 95.9, Justin Johnson. All right, 601, Justin Johnson on KRWF, RadioFreeFargo.org. Thank you for joining me, Canada Talk and D with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here 4 o'clock. 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. However, next Thursday begins a new chapter. What in the world with Wilson? We're going to talk about outrageous stories. I'll curate of the week prior. I'll disperse music. It's a new era. And then, and of course, vote yes on Measure 5 in November 5. And I will uh, keep us abreast on the measure as we get closer to November 5. I won't forget that. I won't forget that. I'm certainly an advocate for cannabis legalization. I just, I'm just bored. And I feel like I beat it to death. So it's time to move on. So again, what in the world with Wilson commences next Thursday. There might be a little can of talk in the residual that might come in. But it looks like that is the plan. I believe this show is awesome. But anyway, kind of talking to you with Wilson is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. 1,200 megs of locally grown hemp whipped up into a fun tub of body butter. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. I show him props every Sunday, 417 Main Avenue. 10 a.m. redo a recovery class. If you got a monkey on your back or you've kicked that monkey, but you can feel that little banana eater on your pant leg, come on through. 11 a.m. worship. I'm going to get out of here. We got Stinky Arts Music Mart on deck, I think. All right. Educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis. So you can educate others on the benefits of cannabis. I will be in next Thursday. So be good to yourselves. Keep your heads up, and remember, tell people to vote yes on Measure 5. We'll see you next Thursday. Until then, Judgment Day, David Allen, peace.